Hello there, Bracey here. So I am doing a, a little kind of a project dissection. Um, I was very fortunate enough to be working on a project at the at the end of uh, or second half of 2018. I uh, worked on a project called called Armonia. Um, it premiered at Tribeca Film Festival in the 360 Cinema section, uh, 2019. And um, and from there, it went to a bunch of different festivals, uh, one of which was uh, showcasing at the Cannes Film Festival, though we could argue that technically... I mean, no, technically it did get showcased there, but there were some issues. There were some issues. We won't really get into that right now. But um, what, I, uh, what I wanted to do is kind of break down what this this whole project was. Uh, Tribeca was is, is awesome. They just released it on their YouTube channel, so... Uh, they're really kind of putting their weight behind uh, promoting promoting the artists that they uh, uh, that they say are noteworthy. So I've been very honored to be part of their fellowship now, and uh, not just me, but the, the whole family. And um, since this this video just got posted and just went up, um, I I felt like it was a good opportunity to kind of talk about it, kind of break down what what it was, what it took to do what the the general concepts were where it came from you know just kind of go through and 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 talk about it so um i'm gonna play a little bit talk about talk about it as we go and we'll see we'll see where it goes uh thanks for stopping by um and if you're if you're interested i'm gonna have the the link of this video in the in the doobly doo in the description below uh so yeah getting started let's just get a, a quick taste of this thing and you'll see that as it's going, I'll, I'll get so uh, right off the bat. This is a 360 animated piece, and not only is it a 360 animated piece, but it's a 3D 360 animated piece. Um, I'm I created this entire project within Unity, and if you don't know, Unity is a game engine that's typically used for building and designing games. Uh, and originally, this experience was meant to be an interactive piece, because uh, I, I was really excited about doing an interactive virtual narrative that required multiple users to work together to kind of build the story in a very interesting way. But halfway through the process, I, I had to make a choice. I found very kind of late into the game uh, that, uh, that the choices that would ultimately make a better interactive piece um, very quickly made a very uninteresting 360 piece. And and since this was for the Tribeca slash, at the time, Google Daydream program, but Google no longer has a Daydream department, they, they're they all gone. Hopefully not because of this project. But um, uh, they're all gone, and, and so now it's just kind of YouTube VR. And uh, at the time... Uh, the deliverable that we had uh, to give them was a 360 video. Now, I wouldn't have put so much weight on that if, for whatever reason, I didn't have this ridiculous misunderstanding that I thought that this, these things were going to be judged, um, and then and then a possible extra reward was put on top of that. So I kind of, I was like, well... Uh, uh, since they're judging this stuff, we've got to cater to the video that they're making. So ultimately, I veered away from my intention of making the interactive piece and went more towards creating a narrative that fit within this 360. So uh, this is a 360 3D. Uh, and if you can, we can check out the. Oh, you can't see this here. Let me move, move my video over here. Um, I don't think I can. I hope that that's applied. I don't know, um, but yeah. See if you see here, uh, uh, the quality. Um, it's actually an 8K video uh, because it's two 4K videos uh, stacked on top of each other to be able to make the the three dimensional effect. And this is actually, uh, technically, it's a 10K video because it's actually. Yeah, five over over five thousand by five thousand. So it's actually a five K video uh, that I had created, um, and and the the quality of you know it's it's a big it's a big project. I was actually very proud that I could 
uh, figure out how to export a project, an animation this big. Here, let's let's diminish me a little bit more and pop me pop me up there. I don't need to see all that. So okay. Um, on this video. Uh, so you can see these things coming together. This is, this was meant to be a kind of an, a Fantasia-like experience. Initially, it was going to be these birds that you would be controlling by gaze, and, and, and there's kind of like this cool kind of dimensionality going on. Um, but ultimately, when I had to move away from that, I, I had to kind of reconstruct what the plan was going to be. And ultimately, I landed on a Fantasia, like kind of a fantastic, kind of an abstract kind of art piece uh, uh, that is mere, kind of marrying a beautiful visual delight um, with, with a piano concerto. The piano concerto ended up being something that I wrote because I couldn't afford... With the budget that we had, it was really limited budget. I won't say how much, but it was a really limited budget. Um, and uh, uh, with that, I needed to make a story, uh, tell a story through a, a piece of classical music, uh, classical construction. Uh, obviously, it's modern day because I wrote it, but it's a classical construction. Uh, and and I had to marry that to the visual narrative, and it's really difficult, especially when you're only going to be able to work for two months on it. Like ultimately, the first half of this project was a lot of pre-production, like as as is the case with most animation. Um, you really got to put in a lot of pre-production up front to make sure that you're not making mistakes down the line. And this went through many iteratives, many edit iterations because ultimately uh this guy i mean th this was a, initially supposed to be a a, a a flying piece like you were it was meant to take place more up in the air and things like that but all the animation or not all the animation but most of the animation particularly the uh the character animation which you'll see in just a second here uh, once i get it going uh, uh this stuff is all motion captured so you see this uh, this bird kind of waving and sighing and starts flapping to the beat. So this is all motion captured. Uh, uh, this was a whole process to get that up and, and going, but ultimately uh, I created my own motion capture solution utilizing the HTC Vive. They have a bunch of tracker pucks. Um, actually, these guys right here. Uh, tracker pucks that you can uh, put on different areas of your body and then with a program that I wrote, uh, I used that to record, and also I kind of co-opted some some software that I, I I'd found in places. But ultimately, I made a motion capture solution that allowed me to move and 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 act. But because it was so late in the game, uh, we didn't have time to explore. We didn't have time to uh, test things out. Um, and uh, the two people that were supposed to be my motion capture actors, they both got sick. So, so I got sick too, but like ultimately I, I couldn't sit out on, on my own creation. So, uh, so I ended up doing all the motion capturing, not only solving uh, how to do it for uh, this project, but also doing it myself because my motion capture actors unfortunately got sick. Um, and that dramatically changed what the what the piece ended up being because all of a sudden I couldn't test things. Like when, when you're trying to work out art or work out uh, uh, like the technical, the technical side of telling a story, uh, you have to be flexible if, if you, know, you don't have all the pieces ready to go. Ultimately, this was supposed to be a bunch of birds flying around, but since I had to essentially start the motion capture, go perform the motion capture, come back and check it out, I became very limited in what I could do. So ultimately what ended up happening is uh, the birds became very grounded. It wasn't a, a, a an anime. It wasn't a play. It wasn't a, a piece that took place on, on the ground, on this plateau that you see here. Um, but and then in the air and then coming back, it was much more limited to the ground, unfortunately. And this this landscape, 
Uh, it may seem barren, but it was actually kind of, that was part of the original design. Everything was supposed to be very rocky. These birds are, are very rocky. These were all designed, the, the birds and the landscape uh, was designed, uh, the rockscape uh, was designed by Jacques Lalo from um, the Nova Media company. Like they, they do good stuff sometimes. And uh, he was really nice enough to, to design this. And he put in a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, a work. Uh, it's not. It's not an easy thing to design this, as you'll understand as we go a little further. Why, uh, uh, basically, all these pieces, as you saw, one one of these pieces just kind of fell and broke on the ground here. Um, each of these pieces, each of the parts of him, there are twelve parts of this bird, including that one that just broke into twelve pieces. Each of these pieces break in to 12 pieces. And if you haven't seen Armenia yet, um, spoiler alert, if you're really interested, like I said before, you can check out the uh, you can check out the link in the description. You can watch it and then come back if you really want to go through and hear me describe all this. But uh, ultimately, I was playing with this concept of this bird is made up of 12 pieces. Uh, uh, each time one of the pieces fall, they break into 12 pieces, and then they also reform into a new bird, utilizing those exact same pieces. The story is ultimately talking about life, death. It's, it's taking themes from life and death and playing with them through the music and through the animation. The, the whole beginning sequence, I just married the visual. You'll see not only are there 12 pieces, but they're actually 12 colors. They might seem very similar, but they're all on that rainbow scale. You might see that I have kind of like an affinity towards a rainbow. Like I've got this hat, this iridescent, the iridescent hat. I've got uh, a lighting setup that kind of cycles through all the all the colors of the rainbow. Um, what I was doing was marrying the kind of breaking the color spectrum into 12 pieces as well as the 12 pieces of the bird and marrying that to uh, uh, the 12 notes of music. So in the very beginning, uh, we're watching these notes get married to the color and get married to the structure, which is ultimately the bird. Uh, and, and within that, I started to play with uh, uh, themes as far as uh, what, what notes are being utilized. The very first uh, the very first note falls, I believe it's a C. It's been a while since I've gone back and, and played with the music. But uh, if that first piece of the body fell, um, that first note is is a C, and it's lost forever for this bird. And this bird is being represented by uh, the piano. And then uh, the other bird that's not formed yet but floating behind it is going to be represented by a combination of the marimba, a marimba and a, and a xylophone, um, a vibraphone kind of thing. Um, let's let's move on. I'm going too far into this. I guess there's there's no way there's no wrong way to do this. I've never really done this before. Uh, dissecting my own my own stuff is, you know, it, it's. It could be interesting for some, but I kind of always just assume that people are just like, what is he talking about? This is really kind of boring. But anyway, um, so, uh, so yeah, let's, let's, let's go through, through this. So, uh, this is the motion capture on, on the HTC Vive. As you can see, uh, uh, the bird now is just reformed. We did like an, a little... A little light change. Now, initially, what I wanted to do is play with time here and have uh, the sun kind of roll back, and then the moon kind of come up, and then that's kind that's kind of uh, playing with the idea of like this is where that 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 light's coming from. But honestly, I, I trying to do a lot in do a whole animation, do a whole 8K animation, 3D in. Uh, uh, two months trying to produce that. Uh, you got to cut what you got to cut. Uh, it wasn't going to be perfect, and ultimately I was trying to make a product that would show the possibility of what we could do if we actually had time. This was all produced in two months. If we actually had more time and more budget, what we could do is far grander uh, than what you see produced here. But uh, this bird... Uh, one of the things that I wanted to play with, what I was really excited when getting into this project, was playing with this idea of pre-coded animation or transitions and uh, uh, letting elements transition between 
pre-recorded motion capture. So you'll notice that this, all the pieces here just kind of floated into position and, and it was already animating, like the, uh, the motion was already happening as the pieces were kind of collecting. I was really proud of that. This, so this is, this is kind of, that's one of the many examples of switching between the, the event script. So I had to write kind of the entire code of this thing, because remember, initially, this was meant to be um, interactive. And I also always intended on it being, returning to an interactive piece uh, uh, when, whenever we, whenever we had the time and the, and the budget. So uh, when I wrote this, I made it so it was easy to just kind of toggle depending on when I hit a button um, or I hard coded a time limit uh, when things were going to happen based on the cues of the music. But ultimately, that the pieces could always float from one motion captured body to another pre-recorded animation to another motion captured body. So the elements can kind of fly between things and then you could use different triggers to, to tell what elements you want it to, to go to. Uh, so that's where the animation, the interaction side of the animation is heading, but ultimately was also very important just because I had so many little pieces going on, uh, uh, since all of these pieces break down to more pieces and more pieces, uh, I needed some kind of a contained scripted way of dealing with the animation sometimes that floating from that circle in the sky to forming the bird is is one of those examples um, and and you'll see some later on now I had a lot of fun dealing with the the volumetric lighting in this like I, I mean animation is something entirely different than it used to be like you can see, oh, he just knocked him off the side of the cliff. But here, this is one of my favorite things. What I like to do, I also wanted to create a piece that allowed you to look around without being penalized. Like, and that's hard to do because when you're telling a story, uh, you often, especially when it's not an interactive story, it's not based on any agency, uh, uh, you, you need time to be able to explore and I wanted to create a place that like you knew where the focus was But there are things that you you might be able to enjoy if you like to look around uh, uh, For me. I loved this this shadow play um, Being able to have the shadow of this bird kind of get cast Out into the canyon and get to see it kind of dance and play play through that space um just because you know we're we're telling it's it's spatial storytelling, and for me as a kid, uh, that kid who was on the baseball field watching planes and and flowers instead of paying attention to the balls that were being hit my way, this is right up my alley. This isn't for everybody. This is kind of a slower piece. Obviously, like I said, it's more abstract. Um, but what I also was playing with the idea of since it's built on a classical structure, classical music structure. Uh, that if we spatialized the instruments, uh, that you would get a sense of the dramatic shifts as they were happening, even if you weren't paying attention to the direct objects. If you were just kind of flowing with the emotional side of the piece, you would get a sense of what was happening. Um, and I was, you know, it, it's it's not perfect, but it 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 does what it does. Uh, Ultimately, I really have to thank um, Chapter 4. They're the ones who are responsible for doing the, the audio design for this. So, I, I should explain here a little bit. Um, I wrote the entire piano concerto on uh, this, this phone and uh, this keyboard that you can kind of see, like the corner of it. Uh, so, it was entirely written and, and designed in MIDI. On, on GarageBand, actually, on the iPhone. Uh, and then I exported those elements, the MIDI files, or the GarageBand elements, out to Dan Coletta, a good friend of mine, uh, who actually went through and did the engineering for the pieces. The only thing that we didn't do MIDI was, uh, uh, was a flute. So there's a flute that comes on later in. Uh, you just can't get a good flute sound when you're dealing with... with with phone, with digital stuff like it's just like the, the quality the air quality just you can't get that digitally yet so we got a, fl a flautist uh, he recorded a flute and a piccolo for us 
uh, and Dan kind of went through and engineered the entire thing and, and then re-exported the entire project into the 12 pieces, made sure everything was aligned. Um, he fixed some of the MIDI moments and stuff like that and that returned that to me. From there, I took those pieces and I actually originally one of those pieces because like I said if it was interactive these pieces would actually be real time wherever the birds flew if they're being represented by uh, an instrument so like right now like I was talking about this chicken kind of this yellow chicken kind of bird kind of representing an earthy character uh, it was being represented represented musically by kind of an earthy sounding element. I wanted something kind of percussive, but still could carry a melody. So that's why we ended up with like a vibraphone and a marimba kind of mix. The main bird, um, which is a mix of all these different pieces, we settled on the piano. First of all, it's a piano concerto, but also because like a piano is kind of just like, it's become the symbol, symbolic like neutral middle point of all music. It can kind, it's, it's a very diverse instrument. It can kind of play a lot of, it, it can be very percussive. It's got a bit of string elements in there. It's, it can be very, like, it's, it's, it's a good medium ground. Um, so the every instrument, that's kind of what I was imagining. And then this other, this other character here, um, thematically in the animation, it's kind of a very fluid character. The character, we named it Flo. Uh, uh, this character, it, it, um, it's being the, the musical instrument that represents it as a harp. So all these things, the, the idea was not only just visually place a character in a three-dimensional space, but also the, the musical representation of that character. So we attached the harp to that bird and we attached the marimba, um, the, the marimba vibraphone mix and the piano. So they're all spatialized. So no matter where you're looking while you're watching this experience, the instrument is in the exact right place. So if there's something that dramatically happens and you, and you know, it was from a very specific instrument, you'll know exactly where to look when, when experiencing it. Um, and so that's a spatialized Fantasia is really kind of what I started to move towards. And uh, so the guys at Chapter 4, they took our, our files and they kind of, they had to hard code the experience into an ambisonic file for the video so it could go up on YouTube. But when it runs inside the, the Unity game engine, uh, it doesn't need, doesn't need those elements. And they added, uh, they added so much uh, good stuff, like they added uh, sound effects when things fall and break, um, all, all really good. I'm really proud of uh, their work. So, uh, this story ultimately of this of this bird falling apart, this a uh, bird that we're kind of referred to as like the uh, the parental bird, but this uh, this kind of came from uh, kind of a tragedy that my wife and I were going through in 2018. We each lost uh, one of our parents uh, uh, in like three days of each other. Um, both to heart attack and the themes, there's that flute I was talking about, the themes of, uh, oh, what do you leave your children, um, started coming up. Like what, what, it, like, how do you talk about death? How do you deal with death? Uh, we don't, uh, we don't believe that death is inherently a bad thing. So, um, it very, Quickly was like, how do you have a conversation about death without making it such a freaking bummer? Um, and ultimately, it became a, a conversation of like, well, it's about energy just continuing on. It just, it's just about things continuing on in a different form. So really, that's what this this entire piece was about, and and that's happening within the musical structure um it starts out it starts out with a piano and then all of a sudden it breaks down to all these orchestra orchestral instruments the melody is what continues on elements of the melody new melodies emerge but ultimately the same um themes that were established in the beginning of the piece are there at the end of the piece uh the same idea as uh, uh visually the same uh, uh bird pieces are there they They've broken, they've changed, but like the elements are still still there. They still carry on. So this is kind of 
just a, a, an ode to just life energy uh, continuing to move on. Now with the animation elements, uh, uh, we were kind of we were kind of limited with some some things more than than I'd like. Uh, some things I wasn't able to fix. So uh, you can see kind of uh, there's this these these light gray lines in there. If you look all around, you realize that there's a box. It actually has to do with the vo the volume. Uh, the fog volume that I put in there, for whatever reason, when dealing with this fog, it was the the pro the part of the program that I used to make this wasn't uh, production ready, and they made that very clear. This is one of the the artifacts that just unfortunate came with it. Um, other things that aren't perfect, you can see that there's some glitching down here after the whole bird just kind of falls apart. The pieces. Uh, because it's inside of a real game engine, like the physics aren't perfect, and they're just kind of bouncing around. Uh, so, like you know, that's that's not that's not perfect. Also, elements of the music it goes on way too long. Uh, 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 the animation of this bird over here I wasn't very happy with. What I am happy with is is how the light plays. How like that's uh, that's really what I was excited about. Also. Um, of the climax, that idea of all these new, all the pieces, this whole, the whole mother bird just kind of finally dies, essentially, it breaks into different pieces, and uh, the idea that all these pieces form their own, uh, uh, their own unique kind of bird, and they're going to grow off, and they're all being represented by their own instruments. I really like that, uh, uh, that theme. It's something that I've, I've, I've found uh, that I've gravitated to a lot in my in my professional career. So, uh, what I liked about this part is that when you're in virtual reality and you're experiencing this, uh, you're actually in the middle of this kind of live spatial, oh no, that's odd. Uh, uh, this is actually the video file, so this is actually what they put up. That's unfortunate. Uh, I'm just seeing that now, right at the climax too, huh? That's brutal. Um, yeah, they had some some issues there. I don't know what happened or why, but yeah, that that's that's an unfortunate conclusion to the video. But uh, I I want to I want to say a few thanks. So initially, the uh, the project it started out uh, uh, when I had applied to this Tribeca program, I'd applied with Sarah K. White, Josh Bernard, and Neil Dvorak. Um, all really uh, good, close friends, amazing artists in their own right in different areas, and we thought this was going to be a really awesome opportunity to work together. However, once we got it, the, the realities of how low the budget were, and the fact that we don't all necessarily live in an area where uh, we'd all kind of work on this together. We all had different financial needs. And then the piece really required a different skill set than we were initially expecting. Um, so that was un that was unfortunate. And also, uh, uh, the original idea, uh, there was this belief in the back of our head that there was probably in the back of all of our heads because of me misinterpreting information and then putting that in that idea in the back of everyone's head that uh, that this was a competition so within that idea of it being a competition uh, I made choices to th make things stand out which in all in the end unfortunately uh, that wasn't as necessary and we could have we could have taken some more chances that weren't necessarily in a game engine or used the camera done something that would have included us all a little bit more but and in the end, it ended up being uh, a me that did most of the the production stuff, and uh, uh, like I told you, the backstory. So this was written by myself and my wife primarily, and then uh, Neil Neil Dvorak came in and he really helped us kind of put these loose pieces. We had the general story idea, but he really kind of came in and helped us kind of uh, 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 pull all the elements together. Um, this man, th I could go on for way too long about this experience. So, uh, uh, Anya, my wife, uh, she did an amazing job kind of keeping all the elements together, keeping me on track because I was working on all the other elements of this. As I said, everything was uh, uh, designed by uh, Jacques the modeling, uh, more specifically. 
Um, like I said, uh, uh, Dan Coletta, I, uh, he did the audio engineering and he uh, he brought in the flout, uh, uh, the flute and piccolo there, Michael. Um, and uh, so Zena, Lauren Hammonds, and Hala Hassan, uh, uh, they're all from Tribeca. Uh, they really helped just keep us informed as to but I mean, they just, they really, they helped us out making this so that not only were they the ones who got us the check, the, the, the money to, to make this, but anything that we needed, they would check up on us, make sure that we were doing things, uh, 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 helped us showcase, helped us get in front of other people. Yeah, I, you know, I can't, I can't complain. Really, really good stuff. And then we also had, uh, uh, briefly, we had the team from Google Daydream uh, that helped us out. And then, uh, th uh, throughout the whole, and we had some mentors that were helping us. Um, uh, we, I mean, it was a big family affair. Uh, uh, we had uh, NYU really help us out with some elements, um, some technical problems, needed to troubleshoot some elements. Uh, Joe and Kyle, uh, they're both from Nova, Nova Media. They're they're working hard on XR. Uh, Matthew Cornelius, when we were trying to figure out our motion capture solution, we went over to NYIT. They had this amazing motion capture studio. I was grappling whether we would do it there or do it in our own uh, makeshift way. Um, so we got to, uh, Anya got to suit up. Uh, you can check out our Potential Synergy Instagram account if, you, if you're interested in seeing elements of that. Uh, Anya suited up in a motion capture suit. Um, we also uh, uh, tagged up our robot who also helped with motion capture I, in the final motion capture solution. Our robot helped, but uh, he, uh, uh, we tested him out in the motion capture setup they have over there. Um, all really interesting stuff. There's so many, so many things uh, that uh, we got to do for the first time and, and test out. It was a really great project. Uh, and we had a, I mean, a really great project to work on. Uh, uh, was, is it perfect? No. Um, uh, is it for everybody? Absolutely not. But uh, uh, did we achieve what we were aiming for? Yes, yes, we did. And and we learned a lot. And there's so many things that we can do now uh, uh, that we couldn't have before. So I just wanted to run through that. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, this was this was fun. Just kind of dissecting it. Uh, uh, there's so many things that I can dissect with this. Uh, I mean, you can we can go back, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there for now. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll, a I'll answer anything I possibly can. Um, I'm happy to discuss this further. Uh, so thanks. Thanks so much for taking the time. See you in the next one. Arrivederci.